Hi there, this is another in our series of Scotland videos, February 2024. I, I have this habit of purchasing things at fancy famous gift shops, if I find something inexpensive, in order to find out if there's lead in them so that then we can approach the museum. And so far, the museums don't respond well when I find toxicants in the things that they're selling in the gift shop. Um, so I don't know if this is toxic. We bought this at the Monaco uh, Museum, the museum for the race cars of the Prince of Monaco. It's a spoon rest. And let's just see here. It is, um, it says souvenir shop Palais de Monaco. It doesn't say Wait, where it's made. I didn't get a focus on that. Uh, there you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I bought this because I felt like a texture on the glazes and because this is a spoon rest where you would put your spoon after using it with tomato sauce. So it seemed like um, it's say. likely that might it might test positive for lead and not only might it test positive for lead, but if it did test positive for lead, that it would be lead that could be worn by the tomato sauce on your spoon. So it would be a potential concern. Then again, it's Monaco and people in Monaco are smart and maybe they know what they're doing. I don't know. Um, so the lead level on this is fairly low. It's it was safe by all standards, 50 parts per million. The cadmium level is a little bit above safe by all standards at 70 parts per million. But does test positive for some lead? Not a lot. We're going to try and focus the test on a red area to see if we get a higher cadmium level. And again, test kits that test positive for lead are also not testing for other things. Oh, so here we go. So we tested the red area and red and yellow are signature colors of lead. There's red lead, like the Golden Gate Bridge and yellow lead. These are colors that are often used. Um, and so here we go, the, the red and yellow N has a lead level of 1,476 parts per million and a cadmium mm -hmm. level of 380. It also has cobalt, which is another poison, at 2,372. So this is a brand new souvenir purchased in 2024 in Monaco and and it's and and if you tested here with a home mm -hmm. test kit and found a negative, but didn't test here to find a negative, you wouldn't know for sure if it was negative. That's another drawback by doing this at home. People who are doing this at home don't understand that you would actually have to test the blue, the purple, the dark yellow, mm -hmm. the light yellow, the green, um, the orange, and mm -hmm. the red. All the different colors would have to be tested separately. There's a pink in there, um, and to determine if there was any lead that might wear mm -hmm. off onto your spoon. You have something you want to yeah, say? Yeah, I was I was just thinking about that because you know, especially in multi-colored piece or patchwork stuff like this. There's just so much that it's almost like not worth the effort. <laughs> right. And and again, that's why I have my website, leadsafemama.com, because you can look things up on my website and extrapolate. Now, what you would look up is souvenirs. Well, souvenirs aren't regulated because they're souvenirs, not really considered dishes, and they're made in other countries in most cases. So most souvenirs, especially ceramic souvenirs that might one might buy at a gift shop in another country, um, even in America, um, aren't going to comply with federal regulations for dishware because it's a souvenir, not dishware. So you could learn that by going to my website and you might choose not to buy a souvenir made of ceramics mm -hmm. and you also might choose not to use something like this as a food functional piece mm -hmm. in your home. Instead, you could hang it on the wall as mm -hmm. art, which, you know, is fine until your granddaughter takes it off the wall and says, oh, this reminds me of grandma. I'm going to use this for my sauce spoon holder on the, st on the stove. And so that's, what, again, why I discourage Courage, keeping these things around if they're toxic because they have unsafe levels of toxicants and while you might know it that information might not carry over to future generations okay this is another video in the scotland series we're testing each of these items with xrf technology and then we're going to test them with the home test kits to see what we find tune in for the next video oh and i did want to say when i said not worth the effort it, i was implying that you might just want to get rid of it rather than yeah you know, spend all the time testing it's easier to not buy it or to not or to just get rid of it if you already own it because the likelihood is that it's toxic, especially if it's ceramic, um, and especially if it's vintage, especially if it's from um, Italy or Portugal or Mexico in ceramic. Those are all um, places where they have high lead ceramics. Okay, more shortly. These are the Scotland tests. We're doing um, three-part testing of consumer goods. We're testing uh, using XRF technology to determine what metals might be in the item. And then we're following up testing using the home test kit of the sky swabs. And then we're using the glowing test kits. And the um, home test kits are designed for testing for lead and paint. They're not designed for testing for lead and consumer goods. We have done three tests over here. This is testing some lead paint 
you can see it's pink. Um, this is not testing anything and this is testing some zinc. It's very orange. So right now we're going to test this from Monaco and we just tested it using the XRF instrument and we found a high level of lead on this yellow end, the yellow and red. It tested for more than 1,000, about 1,500 parts per million lead. So <clears throat> I'm demonstrating this so I can show you that even though these things have lead, they may not test positive using a home test kit. So we dipped it in vinegar and we're rubbing it on here. It had a little brown spot on it already. It's, it's not, so we know this is high lead. We know this for sure. And has other toxicants as well. It has cadmium and cobalt. And it's testing negative. Basically, um, it looks like it doesn't have any lead. It's wait, yellow. Uh, if you turn around, you can see. Uh, wait, let um, me focus it. Huh. No lead detected. Yeah. Versus leaded. And this is for an item we know for sure has an unsafe level of lead, especially for a food use contact item, and especially given it's a souvenir and uh, isn't regulated for lead content. And finally, especially because it's used with acidic food items, you might be stirring your tomato sauce and then put your spoon on the spoon rest, which has high lead and other toxic chemicals in it. So the home test kits, while good for testing for lead and paint, are not good for testing consumer goods. And I've tried to make that clear in a lot of my videos, and I'm doing this series so you can, you know, really um, understand that profoundly. We're gonna be testing some more things. This is the Scotland series. If you wanna see more of these uh, videos, look up hashtag Lead Safe Mama Scotland and you'll find some of them. So this souvenir we saw um, did test positive for about 1500 parts per million lead in, around the end here. Um, that's yellow and red. Um, what we've seen is that if you test using the glowing kit where you use the vinegar, it may not work. The vinegar will interfere with the glowing test kit, which makes sense. So we're going to try, oh, it's funny, it's got lots of little fluorescing bits anyway. But no green, I don't see any. No green, no, they're blue. So we're going to try it here um, on an area that has the colors that we know. Oh. Now I see a tiny green speck. Oh, and then over, over you see that green there's speck? also one over, if you turn to the left, yeah, there's a little bit, a little bit right, like these, uh, these, these bits over there. There's, so, there's a little bit of green there, a little bit of green there. So we know this red and yellow paint is in the range of 1500 parts per million lead, but it's not necessarily fluorescing like in a way that would be alarming. And again here. Oh, oh, over there. Aha, aha. So that's so, so we didn't test this color with the XRF because I, what I did say was how the XRF Fascinating. would have to test so, every single color. Um, and again, the reactive agent home test kit, the swab did not work on this item. And this is a highly leaded item. Uh, the amount of lead that's unsafe in an item intended for use by children is anything 90 parts per million lead or more. And this tested positive for over 1,500 parts per million lead. And this is a brand new souvenir bought at the Prince of Monaco Car Museum in January of 2024. And so, um, you know, basically new souvenirs made of ceramic are not um, a, a safe thing to buy, whether or not that's a spoon rest or um, a, a mug or other things. It's just better to avoid those. Um, the, the kinds of souvenirs you might want to buy are the resin ones. Resin souvenirs made of plastic. You know, it's a heavy, dense plastic that are little ornaments that you might hang on your tree or hang on a window, put on a windowsill. Those are generally lead free, but the ceramic items are not. And again, um, so here we have the Reactive Agent Home Test Kit working with this. And I'll put the link to that test kit in with this video. And the um, it's not working with the um, Skydus swab because the Skydus swabs are designed for testing for lead and paint. The Skydus swabs are an inexpensive option for testing for lead and paint, and they work well for that. They're not a good solution for testing for lead and consumer goods. More shortly. And uh, as you saw there, the reason that you had less of the glowing on that other color was probably because of using the, the vinegar test beforehand. Right, on that same exact item. Mm -hmm.